say a man has slain his kin in cold blood, what are the rest of us to do? Isolate him? Provide him with meat and grains that we risk our lives for? If we cannot trust him to live peacefully within our walls, then let him survive beyond, shape us to keep him as they see fit. And may he return to us through the great will a changed soul. Brutal, cunning and non-trustworthy, the outlaws are a faction of humans who refuse to fit into society by normal means, and rather be an everyday problem by causing further issues to those that only want peace. They work only for the highest bidder, no matter what faction you're on and are given jobs that could involve stealing an ancient artifact, or making weapon deals with the Dominion. If the weapon's good, they'll do whatever it takes to complete the job, even if it involves their lives on the line. Every society has them, the thieves that never keep their hands to themselves, the abusers who pick on the weak, the murderers that kill for the sake of killing. They're all there, right in front of us, all waiting for an opportunity to strike. And once they do, it's only a matter of time before they're caught. In the world of Anthem, it's hard to keep everything in check as there's so many things happening all around us. Although Sentinels are there to keep the peace and act as both military and police, they alone can't protect everyone or stop every wrong act from happening, even though they try their best to do so. We the freelancers also play a major part in keeping the peace, where sometimes Sentinels will need extra support for taking out a outlaw encampment out in the wild. But considering how deeply connected the outlaws are from many years of growth, taking out one encampment doesn't mean a lot when another one will replace it within a day, and carry on from before. They're not simply a small faction we're dealing with. To be honest, there's not a lot, and I mean not a lot of information present, that explains the faction as a whole. In fact, I believe they're the only faction in game that doesn't have a simple explanation of their origins or lifestyle compared to the Sentinels or the Freelancers faction. For now, I'll cover some of the main areas of interest that we do know of and then can expand on with theory. Firstly, how do you become an outlaw? Becoming an outlaw is very simple, all you need to do is commit a very serious or heinous crime. This can vary from murder, selling illegal and active relics, passing important information about government faction to an enemy force, human trafficking, you name it, etc. You don't get thrown outside the walls over small crimes, small petty crimes. It's only the most heinous or violent crimes that will land you outside the walls. And even passing judgement such as this onto anyone doesn't come lightly since you're not given any supplies, gear or weaponry to fight back, just the clothes on your back you're allowed to take. It's quite a daunting task simply for one person to place onto someone. It's not explaining game or lore as to how those that commit crime are judged, as it doesn't explain whether there's a court system in place within the world or a vote from the people who decide everything. This area is left to our imagination I suppose, but I would say it probably depends on how well updated and maintained each force are, as they all have different rules in place to maintain their peace. Plus some rules like theft could have a heavier weight to them in some forts if resources are very low. So if I had to theorise, I would say the judgement system would be down to high ranking officials within the fort, who will judge you depending on certain criteria as broken aka laws. The worse the crime is, the higher chance you get exiled from the fort. If you commit a small crime like theft, then it will be most likely something like community service, but larger crimes like murder, extortion or smuggling relics probably have a higher chance to you being exiled from the fort, because of how dangerous and serious they are. They probably also look into past history as well to see if there's any common theme going on before you, before finally deciding your fate. If on the other hand you have information that might be useful to the fort, or to the people, or even the government, then they will pass this over to Corvus, and we know for a fact that if it's something Corvus wants, then Corvus will get it, one way or another. This is the ultimate punishment any official can give as they know very well that those that travel outside the force, without being prepared, will most likely be killed by the outside world. A quote from Commander Rule states that, Banishment is a brutal consequence and the last resort for those ruthless few who prove themselves incapable of living within organised society. A final terrible step that hangs heavily on anyone who bears the burden of judgement. Yet, some exiles survive 
some even prosper. Now judgment must reflect the fact that the banished may find a place among the outlaws and continue their crimes. What I take from this is that those that get banished may get a second chance in life to carry on their crimes and even prosper from doing so. However, they now deal with the heavy burden of never being allowed to go back to the very fort they may have called home and now also have to worry about other outlaws who may be after their life if they see something from you, perhaps a bounty. Now say you survived on the other hand and you find others like you who were exiled. You may have noticed their gear isn't the best nor flexible like ours and are in fact more or less pieces of scrap metal and fabric sewn together to offer somewhat of a protection. The standard shock trooper wears a yellow visor helmet most likely for protection but also to notice each other out of the field easily. They have a small shoulder pads and knee pads but don't have any protection for the chest area which is quite a disadvantage in fights as this area is very likely to be hit the most. We also have the heavy machine gun troopers who also wear the same gear as the standard shock troopers but have a cape to differentiate themselves from each other and also built in shielding to allow them to soak up extra damage while barraging anyone that gets near with their heavy machine gun. Next we have the close quarter troopers who wear the exact same gear as the standard troopers but mainly use shotguns up close. The moment they see you they start to charge at you while firing simultaneously and they won't stop until either you or they are dead. Now lastly the outlaws have managed to get javelins for themselves such as the ranger and storm javelins which are powerful but not as updated compared to ours. The most common one you'll see is the elite ranger javelin who tend to be the leaders in the field and are the most well prepared to combat others. The ranger javelins seem to resemble something of a steampunk design with their bronze and silver colouring with a really sci-fi helmet to boot. Completely covered in head to toe in armour and shielding these guys can definitely put up a fight with their weapons and gadgets alone with also the ability to use rocket barrage to completely decimate anyone and everyone in their path. For the storm javelins the only main difference I can see is that they have an extra bit of fabric covering their bodies but that's it, no special moves or anything. Their weapons seem to be the standard weaponry that every human faction except the dominion use which makes sense since resources are low and using common components for common weapons are the best way to survive. Except from that they don't seem to pose much of a threat gear wise and there's the only faction in game that strangely don't have an apex enemy on their side which I don't know if it's down to the devs not having anything to offer at the moment or they're waiting for the right time to expand further on the faction. While they may not be the biggest or scariest faction in the game what they do bring to the table is the element of surprise that catches even the freelancers out. Gallum Bliwet I believe that's how you pronounce it, was a freelancer at one point before changing into an outlaw simply because he didn't like the treatment of those getting exiled and left to die. He located, waited and ambushed a number of striders and took whatever he could to give back to those that exiled but was tragically killed by his partner who wanted his bounty for his own. Strangely in Gallon's situation, although he chose the power of crime to help others it in fact backfired on him with him being killed by his own partner in crime all for a bit of money. It might also mean the area called Double Cross is also the same area where he was betrayed and killed at the same time. Now Diggs at first hand is shown to be a freelancer aiding a group of arcanists with delivery until they get quiet and freelancer Yarrow requests we go and find them. When we do find them we actually find out that Diggs is in fact a outlaw just up as a freelancer and using his ability to capture and trick others into believing he is a freelancer. Through his path of destruction we found that he's been working closely with Scars and the Dominion while also leaving behind the remains of other freelancers caught in his trick. At this point Yara only wants one thing and that is for Diggs to be dead. We do manage to find him with other freelancers in need and manage to free them who aid us in taking down the Dominion, Outlaws and Diggs once and for all. His reign of terror has now ended but everything he's done before still lingers to those who survived the past event while Yaro mourns for their loss. So while they may be outgunned, outgeared, out generally everything, they do have an element of surprise to get what they want which in their situation is a key survival skill for them. Unfortunately we can't expand any more around the outlaws and other members as there really isn't any more to discuss around them. 
there's still so much information left unknown that we can only imagine might be the answers to them. Such as, is there a hidden city or fort for just the outlaws? Or is there a leader who is ahead of all outlaws in the areas? Or perhaps, what happens to those that get acquitted for a crime they never committed? What happens to those? So many answers left out in the open, and all we can do is just wait until Baiwa either gives us a DLC, focusing on the outlaws alone, or release more lore around them in game over time. Or just genuinely wait until one day they decide to drop a lore onto us. For now, we'll just wait. So I'd like to say everyone, thank you all for coming by. It's always great to see others come in and enjoy the content I bring. So if you like the video, please by all means leave a like, a share, or even subscribe for more future content like this, as I will be uploading this on a weekly and a weekend basis, so you'll never miss out. Saturday or Sunday, you'll never miss out. So once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.